All right, what's up everyone? Dave here again, kind of showing you how to bring your materials and textures to Maya. So once we're done, once we're happy in Substance Painter, um, I, and I love Substance Painter, it's, I feel like it's the coolest program um, to do nice realistic materials uh, fairly quickly. Uh, but then it's like, well, when you're done with this, now what? Okay, so the goal is we want to bring it into, um, we want to bring it into Maya and then render it out and have an exact equivalent to Substance Painter. So let's take a look at how to do that. I'm going to go back to Substance Painter here. And obviously, assuming we're all done, we're happy with it, I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to go to File, Export Textures. And I can see that this is set to PBR Metallic Roughness. And I'll get to that in a second. The first thing I'm going to look at is the output directory. Where is it saving to? Okay, I'm going to click on that. And I'm just going to go to, um, let's see, Examples. And I'm just going to save it in my Example folder. And for the output template, I'm going to set it to Arnold AI Standard. Okay, and if I look here at the output template, if I go to Arnold AI Standard, I can see that this is what it is. Now, I went ahead and I uh, deleted the front. So normally it's it has this, um, let me see here, if I go to PBR Metal Roughness, normally it has this dollar sign mesh underscore dollar sign texture set underscore base color. Everyone's like, what the heck is that? Well, with a dollar sign that means it's going to be dynamically named so whatever the mesh name is it's going to be that and then whatever the texture set name is it's going to be that and then it's going to underscore with a tag of base color roughness metallic etc so i went in and i just change it now i feel like it seems like it's glitchy sometimes it does it sometimes it doesn't um looks like i spelled that wrong there we go and um so i'll see if it holds up and if it doesn't I'm not too worried about it but I'm just putting my output template to Arnold AI standard file type PNG just leaving the rest of this and by the way if I click on this over here I can see that I'm exporting all of these maps so everything looks good global settings and I'll just click export now there it goes and I can see that it does name it um, the nice clean naming okay so that's nice and clean and if I look at where that is I can see that that was in my examples there's all the files okay our color emissive um, looks like that one I forgot to delete the texture set so I'm just gonna rename that so if you forgot or it wasn't working it's really easy to rename these just right here but I like to rename everything, get it nice and clean before I bring it into Maya. Okay, great. Now, if I go into Maya, um, I'm just gonna do this. I'm going to take this gun and just kind of bring it back up here. Delete everything in the scene. There we go. And I'm going to select this and just get it kind of started from scratch all right um, now and I'm just gonna give this uh, a Lambert material to start with okay so now and press six there we go so nothing special about this gun I feel like other than the fact that it's obviously modeled and it has UVs and then it was exported substance to add the materials and all that good stuff but now we need to take those textures that we just did and apply it to this gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is, and if I haven't done this already, is make a project folder for this. So I'm going to go File, Project Window, and I'm going to go New. I'm going to call this, uh, you know, My Gun. And I'm going to put this into that same location. Okay, I'm just gonna put it here, select, and I'm gonna click accept. Now, let's go take a look at that. Here it is, my gun, and if I open it up, it has all of these um, folders. 
That's what the project folder did in Maya. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize Substance Painter. And I'm just gonna open up another kind of directory here. I'm just gonna right click, go to File Explorer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and find that again. Here it is. And then I'm gonna take all of my Substance Painter files. Okay, these uh, six files, and I'm gonna drag it into Source Images, okay? And now they're in source images of the My Gun project folder. And that's what I want. So I'm going to go back to Maya. And I'm just going to go File, Save Scene As before I even do anything. And I can see that it's saving in the My Gun scenes. So I'm going to call this um, My Gun underscore 001. OK, great. And I'm just going to save that. Now we're ready to begin. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna select the entire gun and I'm going to give it a new material. I'm gonna right click over the gun and hold and go to assign a new material. In here, I'm going to select Arnold Shader. Then I wanna do AI Standard Surface, okay? And when I do that, I can see that over here in the Attribute Editor, this pops up and if you don't see that you may have to click on an icon up here this middle one or hit Control a uh, a couple times to toggle to the attribute editor i'm going to name this gun underscore material and you'll notice that um the files that we got from substance are like color emissive height metalness roughness you can see here color roughness metalness um, here's emissive and down here, bump mapping this, we're going to put the normal map in. So I'll just kind of start at the top and work my way down. So the first one I'm going to do is color and I'm going to go to file and I'm going to click on the folder and I'm going to say, okay, here is, uh, the gun base color. And when I click on that, I can see that great, the color appears. Now to go back, I'm going to click on this back arrow right here. And now I'm going to go to metalness and I'm going to click here, file. And you guessed it. I'm going to grab metalness and click open. Now here's a, a trick with this is I'm going to go to color space. I'm going to set this to raw and then I'm going to go to Arnold. Um, I'm sorry, color balance alpha is luminance. I'm going to put the color space to raw and this to alpha is luminance. I'm going to go back. Now, what's happening here? I'm going to leave the color space alone if color is important, which it is on this one. And then everything else I'm going to basically set to raw and alpha is luminance. Okay, that sounds weird now, but as we go on, it'll, it'll kind of make more sense. Um, so now I'm going to go down to specular and I can see roughness. I'm going to go to this one here. I'm going to scroll up. Sometimes you might have to scroll up, go to the file and I'm going to go gun roughness. Now, once again, I'm going to do raw and alpha's luminance. I'm going to click on go back. And when it turns yellow, I believe that means that, you know, I click raw or alpha's luminance or something. So it's kind of indicating that I did that. So that's good. Um, I have a few more maps that I need to add. So I'm going to go down here and emissive. Okay. So I've got a little green light right here. That's emissive that can turn on. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to go to color and I'm going to go to file and the folder and I'm going to find gun emissive. And I'm going to put that on. Now here, because color is important, I'm going to leave the color space at sRGB and I'm not going to check that. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that alone and I'm going to go back. And it might look like nothing happened, but if I zoom in to this and if I put my weight of my emissive up, you can see that that kind of turns the emissive on or off. And I can see that my slider goes from zero to one, but I could type in a number like two and now it'll even go higher. 
I could probably even type in 100 and it'll go really, you know, kind of bright. So that's kind of cool. I'll leave that on for now. Okay. And then I'm going to go down here to geometry, bump mapping. This is where I'm going to put my normal map. So I'm going to click on this one here, file. And I'm going to set this to tangent space normals. That's important. Okay. And then bump value, I'm going to click on this on the folder and I'm going to say gun normal. And once again, I want to set my color space to raw and alpha's luminance. Okay. Now we are almost there. So I'm going to hit back and back again. I can see that once again, I've got color, metalness, roughness, emissive, um, my normal map. Now, if I had an opacity map, I would put that in right here. Okay, but there, I don't have any opacity, so I'm not going to put that in. And um, by the way, opacity, um, even if I had opacity on here, it's not going to export with the AI standard. So a way that you can do that is if I go to export textures, I can go to, um, instead of having this at the Arnold, I can go up here to document and channels. And if you have opacity as one of your channels, it'll export that opacity channel that you'd be able to do. Okay. So just kind of a quick tip there. Um, and then if you didn't want the other ones, you could just delete all of them except, or just turn them all off except for opacity. So just kind of a neat trick getting opacity out of here um but once again i don't have opacity so i'm not going to be i'm not going to really worry about that now what's next well if i try rendering this in maya right now and i'm just going to open up arnold and before i do that i'm actually going to save this i'm going to go file save scene as and i'm just going to call this gun 02 there we go if i try rendering this so if I um, open up my Arnold render view, and if I hit the play button right here, it, it should render. Okay, so it's calculating right now. And you may be kind of anticipating maybe a, an issue that we might be having, okay? And I can see that it's all black. Now, yours might not be a gray background, I'm just going to go ahead and set this, take that background off. Okay, don't worry about that. I'll get to that in a second. Um, and I can see that, what the heck, every, nothing, I can't see anything um, except for my emissive light, if you have any. But if I go up here um, and I can click on this one, which is the alpha channel, so I can tell that I'm that the gun is in my view. Okay, now what is this? Well, if I rendered this out and if I brought it like, let's say into Photoshop, the back could potentially be invisible and the gun would be shown. So I could like replace the background. But why I like to do that initially is because I wanna see, you know, make sure that the camera is facing the gun and that I'm just not like looking at some obscure angle, okay? So I wanna make sure that that's working. So I'm going to turn my alpha channel off and I need to add some lights in the scene. I'm going to hit stop here. Okay. So what lights am I going to add in the scene? Well, the lights that I want to add, I, if I'm looking at trying to mimic what Substance Painter is doing, I want to get the exact lights that Substance Painter is using. And if I go over here, I should find um, display settings. And if you don't see the icon here, it might be one of the tabs over here. But I'm going to click on display settings. And on display settings, I can see what map it's using. So if I go down here to environments, I can see that it's using the panorama map. And if I want to visualize that, if I turn the opacity all the way up, and sometimes there's a blur. Okay, I can bring the blur all the way down. Now I can see that this is the environment 
that's responsible for 100% of the lighting of this gun in Substance Painter. Now we normally don't see it because the opacity is turned way down just to the camera. But once again, all the reflections and all that good stuff is responsible for the image. Now, you might not believe me, but watch what happens if I drag and drop a different one in here. You can see how much the lighting has changed. Even if I don't have this on there, you can see that if I drop one of these other ones, how much the lighting, you know, really depends on the image. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that panorama. And if I want to export this panorama and use this in Maya, I'm just going to right click and export resource. Now I'm going to put that into my gun projects folder, source images, and I'm going to just say select folder. Okay. And that's it. I should have it here. Here it is panorama. By the way, you'll notice that now we have all these extra files, these TX files. What the heck are those? Well, the first time you do a render in Maya, um, it basically creates these text TX files. Um, it just basically speeds up the, the render. Now, if you would throw those away, which I don't recommend, but if you did, it would just have to recalculate those um, the next time it renders. So I feel like it'll render a little bit faster if you just leave those in there. Okay, but you can see that here's the panorama um, from Substance Painter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Maya and I want to add that globe to my Maya scene. To do that, I'm going to go into Arnold, Lights, Sky Dome Light. With the Sky Dome Light, I'm going to go over here and where it says Color, I'm going to go click on this, File, I might have to scroll up, and then I'm going to go find that panorama. Okay, and I'll go ahead and open that up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and leave this alone. And you might be saying, wait a minute, the color is important on this. Why is this color space raw? It automatically did that. And that's because of the file format. The fact that it's an EXR file uh, just means that it should be like that. And if that's confusing you, don't worry about it. Just um, just do that, okay? All the files, I believe, from Substance Painter are going to be EXRs, and they're going to come in, and it'll automatically just kind of put the right color space. So now, let's go ahead and I'm going to hit play. And now I can start to see that, hey, we're really getting a cool um, representation of what we had in Substance Painter. But if I look closer, and by the way, I want to make sure that window 3D manipulation is turned on because now if I rotate around here, hmm, if I look close, there's something kind of weird happening. Like if I look at this dirt on here, it looks like the dirt's actually like denting in and the dirt should be actually sticking up. So a lot of times a problem that can happen is that the normal map is going to have the reverse kind of effect that it should have. And that's not a problem. Um, we can easily correct that. I'm just going to hit stop here. The way that we're going to correct it is I'm going to click on the gun, any, any part of the gun, go down to material attributes. And then, OK, great. Here's the material of the gun. And then I'm going to scroll down to geometry. Again, that's where I put the normal map on. And I'm going to click on this little icon. And that's going to take me into the file. But I'm going to jump backwards one. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but I'm going to go ahead and jump backwards one. And remember this area? This is where we told it to be a tangent space normal. I'm going to click on Arnold here. And I'm going to flip R, which is the red channel, and the green channel. Now, if I hit play, notice, watch the dirt here. And now if I hit play, I can see that it looks like the dirt is sticking up. So it was really easy to fix that. And I can see that it actually fixed it for everything. Now everything looks right. My welding marks, my um, nails. Um, yep, I, th I think everything is, 
is working. So I always like to kind of test that out. And you might say, well, well, that's weird. Why would Substance Painter kind of screw that up? And the here's kind of the technical reason behind that um, is that when you start a new Substance Painter project, your normal map format is either going to be DirectX or OpenGL. And just what that means is that one kind of considers, um, you know, kind of stuff bumping up and the other one's going to have stuff bumping down. And um, it just depends on how you're rendering it, on what, um, are you rendering it in a game engine? Are you rendering it in Maya? Are you rendering it with a graphics card? Are you rendering with a CPU? There's all these different variations. Um, and I know that sounds kind of confusing. So just realize that um, you, you could avoid that step of flipping it if you have the correct normal map format here. I don't really worry about this. I just leave it at DirectX and then I, I just flip it if necessary because now I could bring it into something else and I might not need to flip it. Okay, so just, just kind of being aware of that. So I'm gonna go back to my Arnold um, view here and let's talk about some things here. The way that I can kind of check to see how well I did putting this stuff together is if I go to the hypershade, okay, and in the hypershade, I'm going to select the material of this gun, okay? So if I can see that it's called gun material. And there was some that I was kind of playing with before. I'm just gonna click on the gun material right there. And I'm gonna click on this input output connections. And now this is what comes up and I can just press alt and just kind of navigate uh, around here just like in Maya. If I look at this, this is the material that we started plugging stuff into. And these are gonna represent each file. Um, and this, we don't really need to worry about this, but what this is is the placement or the rotation of that file. So let's say I brought, let's say a picture of bricks into the scene for my color image, and I wanted to repeat those bricks or rotate them. I would select on this node, and that's where I could repeat or rotate it. Um, since we um, have very specific coordinates from Substance Painter, let's not kind of worry about any of the purple stuff, okay? But if I click on this, I can see that this is the file that I brought in. So the first one I brought in was color, and it gives me the important things. I can see the color space and alpha's luminance. So for color, remember, we're going to leave it at sRGB and leave this unchecked. But if I go to metalness, I can see that it's raw, and alpha's luminance is checked. If I go to roughness, that's raw, alpha's luminance is checked. And if I go to my normal map, I can see raw and alpha's luminance. If I click on emissive, that should still be sRGB and this should be unchecked. So that looks all good. On my normal map, you can see that this there's an intercepting node right here. And if I click on this, I can see that that is set to tangent space normals and that's correct. So this is basically the recipe for everything that you need to do from Substance Painter to Maya, okay? As kind of a bonus, I'm gonna just kind of show how to get the background out of here um, because the background is meant for just lighting. I don't really wanna see it. And that's kind of something that in Substance Painter, it kind of hides it by default like that. Okay, so I want it to look more like that. What I can do is I can select this globe, or, or I could just select it right here, and I'm going to scroll down in the attribute editor, and I'm gonna put visibility. The camera, I'm gonna set that to zero. And what that means is that, now if I hit play, I can see that the background is going to be um, just solid black right now because what it's saying is that hey is this image available to the camera and zero means that it's not available we can't see it at all but 
You might say, well, why is it there? Well, it's still responsible for the lighting and all this other stuff and reflections and that kind of stuff. So that is going to be a nice thing that we don't see this. You don't ever really want to see this. You want to just have it there for lighting purposes. And if I want to switch the background color, I'm going to go up here to my render settings and on um, I'm going to I want to make sure that I'm in Arnold. OK, and if I go to the Arnold render tab, if I scroll down to environment background legacy, if I click on this, I'm going to go to create ray switch shader. And now on this, I can set this to be any color I want. And if I wanted a different, so this would be kind of any shade of gray. But if I wanted a different color, I could just click on this and I could choose any color I want. I usually like to have it just kind of a shade of gray. Um, I feel like that's not, you know, distracting. And now I can kind of look at the gun. Whoop. Kind of look at the gun in its full glory. And I can add other lights in there um, if I wanted to. But that is um, how we can kind of translate from substance to Maya. And one last thing here, realize that if I press one on this, it's going to be hard. And if I press three, it'll actually kind of be that, you know, kind of preview to smoothing. So it does respect that. So just kind of, you know, be mindful of pressing three. And if you want to save the images, just right here, save image. And when you save the image, just be aware of, um, let me see here. Oh, actually, yeah, you're, you're fine here. Okay. Yep. So just save image and then you're good. All right. Well, hopefully that was helpful. If you like this video, please subscribe to uh, support me on YouTube and feel free to check out my channel and find a bunch of other free videos. All right. Thanks guys.